Shalom and blessings to you. I'm Reverend Clifton McDowell Sr. I'm the pastor of the Church of God of East New York, located in the heart of Brooklyn, the East New York section of Brooklyn. We're so glad that you chose to tune in to our channel for this message. We believe that God has a word for you. We hope that you will subscribe to our channel and like us. Now let's go in and hear a great message. Will you stand once more with me as I read from um, Romans chapter 6? Romans chapter 6, we're going to read, amen, um, starting at the 6th verse, or the first verse of Romans chapter 6. And it says, What shall I say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? No, by no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Well, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of God, of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in death, like his, we shall certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. For we know that since Christ was raised, amen. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. He cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather... Offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law but under grace. Come on, say amen. amen. You may take your seat. Thank God for the word of God. Early Christians... Amen. When they were being baptized, they would declare their faith by shouting out, Jesus is Lord. Will you shout that out with me? Jesus is Lord. Come on, do it again. Jesus is Lord. Amen. It always, baptism has always been a sign of submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Story is told of a, a machinist who used to work at the Ford Motor Company in Detroit many, many years ago. He became a Christian and he was baptized. Shortly after he got saved, the Holy Spirit convicted him of his need to make restitution for some car parts mm -hmm, and tools Yes, he had stolen from the company before he became a Christian. The next morning, after he had gathered all the parts and after he had gathered all the tools, he brought everything back to his employer, explained how he had just been baptized and he wanted to make things right. Well, his boss was dumbfounded. So dumbfounded that he sent a cable message to Mr. Ford, who was out of the country at the time, and asked him how he should handle this very, amen, weird 
situation in his mind. Mr. Ford sent an immediate reply and said, make a dam in the Detroit River and baptize the entire city. <laughs> if this is the impact that somebody giving their life to Jesus and being baptized, he says, we need this all over Detroit. Well, it didn't happen, but I think you get the point. Baptism is clearly, clearly taught in Scripture. And since the Scriptures are our best and most obvious authority on this, on any issue, especially this one, amen, we want to see what God's Word says. Amen. If you're taking notes, the theme is repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized. It's a mandate. Baptism is a mandate. And a mandate is an order or a command. A command is something that we must follow if we are to be obedient to the one giving the command. Matthew 28, amen, verse 18 through 19 says, Jesus, as he's about to leave and go back to the Father, he gathers his disciples and he tells them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all, of all nations. What do we want to do? Baptize them, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The one who has all authority. Can you say all authority? The one who has all authority has given a command to his church to practice the ordinance of baptism. Acts 2.38, the apostle tells us that we are to repent and be baptized. We are to turn from our sins, turn from the world. We are to turn to the Lord. We ought to repent and be baptized because i got to tell somebody, there is no forgiveness without repentance. If you're not going to repent, if you're not going to turn from your sin, there is no forgiveness. You must repent in order to receive forgiveness. Somebody ought to say amen. He says repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the what? For the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus not only commands us to be baptized, but Jesus laid the example in his own life. He was baptized when he began his actual earthly ministry in this life. In Matthew 3, Verses 13 through 15, it says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. Those of you that went, I believe, on this last time with us to Israel, amen, um, we actually baptized some of the saints in the Jordan River. And that songwriter says, Jordan River, chilly and cold, chills my body but not my soul. It was a little chilly. Amen. But that song also says, if you don't believe that old Negro spiritual that I'm told was used even during slavery as Harriet Tubman would lead folk to the freedom land in the north, they would sing that song, wade in the water. Children, wade in the water. God's going to trouble the water. And the song says, if you don't believe I've been, amen, baptized, just follow me down to the Jordan stream. She was telling them it was used as code also. She was telling them they need to get in the water as they're traveling in order for the dogs that were after them not to smell their scent. I'm so glad that Jesus, amen, covers our sins. Though your sins be as scarlet, he says they'll be white as snow in Scripture. How many of you know Calvary covers it all? He says, so far will I remove your sins from you as far as the east is from the west. 
never to remember them no more. So he tells us that Jesus himself, at the beginning of his earthly ministry, Jesus came to the Jordan to be baptized. But he says, but John, his cousin, tried to deter him, saying, wait a minute, hold up. I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Remember when he saw Jesus, he told John, told his own disciples, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And he says, wait a minute, I should be asking you to baptize me. Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And then the Bible said, then John consented. Amen. Literally, Jesus was saying that he was doing it because it was the right thing to do. He was doing it for our admonition. He was doing it for our example. So it is a mandate. Baptism is a mandate for every believer, every follower of Jesus Christ. If you're not a follower of Jesus, you don't get baptized. If you've made up in your mind you're going to live any way you want to live, amen, you don't get baptized. If you've got your own version of Christianity that is not the scriptural version, you don't get baptized. We don't baptize babies. We don't sprinkle them. We don't baptize them. Because it, it is you must repent before you're baptized. Somebody say amen. amen. And so it's a mandate. It's a command. A command is something that requires an obedience from us. So if you're again, if you're a follower of Jesus and you say Jesus is your Lord and Savior, but you say you don't need or you don't want to be baptized or you're afraid to be baptized, it puts you in a very precarious, shaky position. You have no ground, no foundation to stand on. We're commanded to be baptized. And so the question is asked, well, what method? Man, some folk were raised in um, faiths that they sprinkle. They take you to a little pool. Amen. And they say, we're going to baptize you. And you find out it's just a little fountain. You wonder how in the world is big me going to fit in a little of that? Amen. It's by immersion. Can you say immersion? immersion? Amen. It's The method is by immersion. The Bible clearly describes this as the process. Baptism, first, it requires water. Not sand, not air, water. Anytime someone was baptized in the New Testament, it was in water. Baptism requires plenty of water, enough water that you can be immersed. It requires going down into the water because you can't go, you can't come up from the water until you go down into the water. Acts 8 38, and he gave orders. A man, when um, Philip was talking to the, the, the Ethiopian eunuch, and he was explaining, amen, the, the word of God to him. And as they were traveling, the eunuch looked and he saw some water, and he asked, what hinders me from being baptized? There's some water. The Bible said then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized them. Listen, it could be in the ocean. It could be in a lake. It could be in a bathtub. Amen. Some of our parents have a testimony that they went down to the ocean. They went down to a lake and they went down in Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. My mom, she went down to Coney Island and she followed the Lord in obedience in baptism. But you got to go into the water. Immersion. It requires immersion Amen. If we're going to be obedient to what the Lord has commanded. Acts 8 39, the scripture says, when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. The Spirit of God 
a man brought Philip there, and the Spirit of God took him away. But that unit went home back to Ethiopia, bringing the gospel with him all the way to Ethiopia. And some of the, the oldest Christian churches are located in Africa. Because an Ethiopian eunuch took the good news and went back home with it. And so the method is immersion. The meaning of baptism. Baptism is the symbol of what takes place when one is born again. And baptism should not be neglected. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but you've been walking with Jesus, amen. You've been, you've been following the Lord and you've not been, amen. You've not gone down in baptism. What hinders you as the Ethiopian unit? What hinders you from being obedient to the Lord's command? It is, it is, a, it is a testimony to the world that your sins have been forgiven, that you've committed your life to the Lord. Amen. And so we want to encourage you, if you have not gone down in baptism, amen, if you belong to another congregation, you ought to go to your pastor and say, Pastor, I'm walking with Jesus. I've given my life to him, and I want to be obedient to his word. The meaning of it, amen, it represents complete surrender of everything you are and everything that you have to follow Jesus Christ and to be obedient. To him. There is no forgiveness, as I told you. Amen. Jesus died for you, but you cannot experience what he died for until you repent from your sins. And though bap through baptism, amen, we say we die to the old life and we resurrect to the new life in Christ. Anybody got new life in Christ? Can, can, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you tell the difference of who you used to be and who you are now? You, you see, if, if there's an old life, the only way that you're going to tell the difference between a, a new life and an old life is Jesus. Jesus has to stand between who you used to be and who you are. The older saints used to say the things I used to do, I don't do them no. The places I used to go, I don't go there no more. Why? There's been a change, a great change, since I've been born again. <laughs> Brings about a change. And, and so baptism is, is representing the change that has taken place and continues to take place. Because the good work that he has begun in you and I, he will continue it into the day of Jesus Christ. But if you've been born again, there must be bona fide fruit. There must be evidence. That's why John says, bring evidence of your repentance. Folks that know you ought to see there's a change. See, we can talk change, but it has to be show and tell. You ought to be able to look in the mirror and say, what in the world is going on? I remember when. I remember at that time, if this had happened, I'd have done that. And the only conclusion that you can come up with is Jesus in the middle of who I used to be and who I am. Tom Ellsworth, a writer, tells the story about a Christian who went on a tour of the Holy Land. When it got to what has um, been... Um, labeled as the traditional site of Calvary. The tour guide explained what had happened during the crucifixion. And then he asked those that were gathered there, has any of you been here before? This Christian raised his hand and responded, I have, I have. The guide asked, you have? When were you here? Expecting, well, five years ago, two years ago. The Christian responded, over 2,000 years ago. <laughs> he 
because he recognized that when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he was taking my place. We were in Christ, amen. We were there. It was our sins that held them fast. He took my sins. He died in my place. Oh, glory to God. Baptism also signifies our commitment to Jesus as both our Savior and Lord and the one who gave his life. There are those You want Jesus as your Savior, but you really don't want him as your Lord. Save me, Jesus. Save me from a burning hell. I don't want to hear you say, depart from me, I know you not. I want you to save me. We want him as Savior, but we don't want him as Lord. Because when Jesus is Lord, he's in charge. When Jesus is Lord, my life is no longer my own. When Jesus is Lord, he calls the shots while I'm alive. My life is not my own. To him I belong. I give my life. I give my life away. When Jesus is Lord, you don't just do what you want to do. You don't just go where you want to go. You don't just say what you want to say. You don't even marry anybody you want to marry. You don't move anywhere you want to move. Why? Because your life is not your own. Too many folks call Jesus Lord, but they don't live their life like he's Lord. They don't operate like he's Lord. They operate like they're still in charge. Y'all ain't got to say amen. I know it's true. But baptism is to signify that Jesus is not just my Savior, he's my Lord. And I'm committed to him. Someone wrote, an impression without expression leads to depression. You can have the best impression, but if it's not an expression, if it does not come out in your words, in your life, in your responses, That's all it is, is an impression. Some of us have been impressed with Jesus, but we've not submitted ourselves to Jesus. And I want to tell you something. It's hard to keep up an act. My pastor used to say that one of the most beautifulest keys on the piano is be natural. See, I, I, I don't have to put up a lot of energy to be who, I'm in, who I am. I, I don't have to worry who I'm around today and who I'm around next week if I just be natural. But if I am counterfeiting, If I am allowing myself to follow the tracks of the enemy who can transform himself, who can masquerade as an angel of light, then I've I've, I've got to keep track. I've got to keep track of who I'm with. (laughs) I've got to keep track of where I am. Because If I'm a party animal with you on Friday and I'm in somebody else's bed on Tuesday, I've got to try to juggle those kinds of things to make sure that I don't I don't get my Friday crew mixed up with my Tuesday crew, mixed up with my Sunday crew. Y'all don't hear me. Listen, that takes too much energy. That that will wear a person out because it's only a matter of time 
You've all seen, you've all seen the, the shows. You've seen it on television. The brothers married to Sally. But somewhere along the line, because he's been messing with Betty so much, he calls Sally Betty and Betty Sally. I must be talking. Okay, let, let me leave that alone. Let me leave that alone. Be real. It doesn't, it doesn't matter when you're on vacation. Be real. See, some of us metamorphose, metamorphosize when we go on vacation. Oh, glory to God, we can cut loose now. When the disco music goes, there you go. I'm your baby tonight. As if Jesus is not on the cruise ship. As if Jesus don't know where the hotel is. See, we, but we belong to the Lord 24-7. Let all that you do in word or in deed be done to the honor and glory of the Lord. Baptism is an, is an expression of your faith and love for Jesus. Baptism also, it signifies cleansing. Cleansing that you experience through the washing, amen, of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that when we repent and we, 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 we've given our life to the Lord, in 1 Corinthians um, 12, 13, it says, For we were all baptized by one Spirit so as to form one body. We're the Jew or Gentile, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. See, the, the Holy Spirit, when you repent and you give your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes to reside in you. And he performs his baptizing function. He is like water that cleanses us, that purges us, that washes us. That it's, it's as if, like David says, create in me a clean heart. Purge me with hyssop. Only the Holy Spirit can cleanse your wicked heart. Well, you ought to say amen. The water of baptism, physical baptism, does not cleanse you. It is only the water of a spiritual baptism that cleanses you. The Spirit of God, he not only cleanses us, but he empowers us. Water baptism is not to be neglected. Why? Because it is a mandate. It is a command from the Lord himself. We follow his example. But it can't save us. But because he can't save us does not make it meaningless. It does not mean that you can neglect it. And you say, well, pastor, what about the thief on the cross? What about him? What that got to do with you? You walking around, talking, going to work, going to school, getting up, laying down. You're not restricted to a cross. Your hands are not nailed. Your feet are not nailed to a cross. What hinders you from being obedient? It's an outward expression. It's a testimony to my, to my family, to my friends, that I've been born again. 
that my life is hid in Christ. And that he is the priority in my life. He has cleansed me. He has renewed me. And I have experienced all of this because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on a hill called Golgotha. Second, or not, Ephesians 1.17 says, In him we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. And so baptism, it signified the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. For us, baptism is a testimony that we are offering our lives. Romans 12 says, I urge you, brothers, because of all that God has done. God been good to anybody? God been merciful to you? Has God been God? Because of all that God has done. He says, I urge you, present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing unto the Lord. It is your reasonable act of worship as a follower of Jesus Christ. We're not saved to sit and wait for heaven. You are saved to serve and make disciples of the nations for Jesus Christ. This morning, we are blessed to have two that have made a commitment to the Lord. And they have decided to follow the Lord in obedience to his command. And so we want to celebrate today. And we want to give God glory and we want to give him praise. I hope you enjoyed that message. And I hope that you will like and subscribe to this channel. If you want to experience a live service, be with us at this same channel next week on Sunday at 1030 a.m. Until next time, God bless you.